Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to VO Buzz Weekly, the web show all about the voiceover business. Yep, and on today's show, we have the amazing Chris Borders. He's a video yes. game director. And let me just tell you, man, if you have any inclination of wanting to do video games mm -hmm. in your life, you don't want to miss today's show because the information that Chris is going to give you will help you get there. Yeah, and Absolutely. you're not going to get it anywhere else. Nope. From that perspective. Absolutely. Why are you so happy? I'm so happy because... Why are you so happy? I love my shirt. <laughs> you know how you put something on and you're just like, it just makes me happy. She loves her shirt. What does your shirt say, Stacy? <laughs> my shirt says voiceover girl. Voiceover girl. And it girl. has pink on it, and which it has we pink know on I it. love. That is a really cool shirt. Where did you get that shirt, Stacy? Well, Chuck, I went to VOBuzzWeekly.com. You may know it. And I clicked on our store. We have a store at VOBuzzWeekly? We Buzz have Weekly? a store. Get I'm out not of even here. kidding. No, oh I'm not even kidding. Gracious. You should go there. You should go there. It's awesome. There's so much fun stuff. We have mugs and drinkware and awesome shirts for men, for women, for babies. For babies. Hello. iPhone cases, iPad cases. At rock bottom it's prices. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and great quality. Yeah. Buy now. And if you order now, we'll triple. No. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, but now. But thank you. Yes. Thank you. And now it's time for VO Buzz Weekly. Tip of the week. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's going crazy. Um, I mean, my animal mood. Yeah, right. I don't know what kind of animal. You know, it was. the other week was Angry Birds. Now it's like, who? What is that? <laughs> it's sort of a horse. Rectatorus. <laughs> okay. okay. So people have been asking, is my commercial demo good enough? Okay. My answer is, your commercial demo should not be good enough because mm -hmm. nobody is going to want to listen to it. People are interested in two things: great. And really bad. They'll remember those two, and yes. that's it. Anything in the middle, they won't. So you want to keep your commercial demo uh, great. And here's how you do it. Number one, keep it short, yes. a minute. That's all we need. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, make sure that the content is completely up to date. Okay. Yeah, watch television. Listen to the radio. Absolutely, see what's the out kind there. of stuff that's out there right now that people use, that people buy, that people. That's the kind of stuff that should be on your demo. Yes. Okay. Uh, and the other thing is, is as you get better, so should your demo. Don't show how good you were a year ago, two years ago. You should be better now. So however good you are now, that's what should be on your demo, right? Exactly. And there you go. That will give you an amazing demo, not just a good enough. Exactly. There you go. Hey, let's hear from a viewer. Okay, I love your comments. This is from Pat from Perrysburg, Ohio. Hi, Pat. Hey, Pat, thanks for watching. He says, or she says, thank you so much for this show. Doing VO is so much fun, but sometimes I get lonesome in the sound room. How great to know there's a real community out there that I can plug into and really, really enjoy. Thank you, Chuck and Stacy. You guys are so upbeat. Now, back to the show. Yep. And that's a great idea. Was that Pat. her saying back to the show? Like she's going to go? Her or him, yeah. She's going to watch uh, VO Buzz guess. Weekly? Yeah, she was more? having a little, awesome. or he was having. Well, let's get back to the show then. Here we go, Chris Borders. So today we are all about video games. Our guest has been on different sides of the voiceover business for more than 20 years as an audio recording engineer, editor, casting director, and now he is known as one of the best video game directors around. His company, Tiki Man Productions, has produced voiceover for massive hits like Gears of War 1, 2, and 3, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, Mass Effect 1 and 2, Need for Speed, and so many others. We are so super excited to have these super cool Chris Borders. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Chris guys. Borders, Thank welcome you. to VO Buzz Weekly, Thank my friend. You, you are so freaking awesome. It's a pleasure to come. Does this guy look like a rock star or well, what? Well, you know. He is. That's why. I'm, I'm reliving it, you know. Midlife crisis. <laughs> what can I say, you know? Can <laughs> I have everyone's autograph? I know, but isn't midlife crisis awesome, though? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's like, isn't, isn't it like, what, like 40 is now to be like the 20s yeah. again or something like well, that? It's, you know, it's agreeing with you, your yeah, crisis. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying Some people look at it as like a bad thing and it's like, I think it's an awesome thing, I know. Well, you know, so, so, yeah, so I grown my hair out again, and they started saying to me, you know, so you putting the band back together, you know? And I'm like, well, yeah, I don't yeah, know, maybe, not? you know? I'm, I'm talking to Chuck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, any breaking news exactly. we want to hear? Yeah, right, no. Yeah, we're keeping it secret for exactly. right now. To be no. continued. Yeah, under wraps. Yeah, exactly, under wraps. <laughs> Let's hear your story. How did you get well, to video it, games? It's kind of a weird story, but it's very similar. I think you'll find that um, my situation is a lot like a lot of other people who are on the other side of the glass, as we like to say. You know, I right. mean, you've obviously had some of the greats in here, voiceover-wise, you know? 
know. And yeah. we kind of all got into this business and went through one angle or another. A lot of actors came from it either from an acting background, like Paulson, you know, he kind of came in from the, from the on-camera thing and then said, you know, hey, wow, this thing's really working for me, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, Jim, you know, same kind of thing. And, um, you know, Jess, I mean, I mean, I, what was he doing? He was Dig doing digging jingles. ditches or something yeah, like and, that. And you that know? Too. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I forget yeah, what he yeah. was doing. Yeah, you know, something like that. But, um, so, yeah, I mean, I kind of came in it from the music world, you know. I was um, a musician, composer, um, you know, doing, you know, you know, with the keyboards and whatnot, and uh, did a rock band thing, you know, right. failed recording contract. No. Yeah, which we're going to get into the rock yeah. thing a little bit later, yeah. but yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, we'll bring Jess in for that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and so I, um, you know, was selling music gear for a long time. Uh, not too long, but I mean, you know, quite a few years. I was uh, worked at a place called Goodman Music. And so one day I was approached by uh, the audio director from a company called Interplay Productions, mm -hmm. which was kind of a pioneer in the business of video games, um, both development and publication. Yeah. And, um, and they were kind of something that kind of came about after, you know, there was a big thing in the 70s and 80s with video games, and yeah. then it kind of took a major death. Yeah. Then it kind of came back once the PC and the Mac kind of hit the market. Yep. And all of a sudden, that was you know something which was new, and it was a whole new generation by that time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I worked for a company that kind of got its start in the 80s out of a garage, literally. And uh, a gentleman named Brian Fargo, who has you know infamous you know pioneering fame, yeah. you know and whatnot, and uh, he started Interplay. Well, I kind of came in sort of near the middle of that company. You know, there was maybe about 250, 300 employees at the time. And I was brought in as an audio editor because I understood how to operate Pro Tools and sure. whatnot. Mm -hmm. And um, surprisingly enough, one of my first gigs was was um, you know monitoring a recording session with George Decay for mm. a Star Trek title. And uh, it's it's really great to work with George. You know, George is the nicest guy. I mean, you know, he's uh, he likes to talk a lot. Yeah. And um, you know, and you know, so but no, my first experience was working with one of the nicest guys from a show that you know. I mean, kid you guys. It yeah. was like surreal for yeah. me because I grew up watching this uh, this show in syndication as yeah. a kid growing up, you know. And I mean, you know, it was it was in the '60s, it was kind of before my time, but you know, and they brought it back in the '70s. Yeah. So, you know, inevitably, it was kind of like one of the things that, as a child, that was something which my parents always groveled and kind of you know were happy about, which I'm sure you can probably relate oh. with. <laughs> is you know, <laughs> I watched a, I watched a lot of TV. I listened to a lot of music. I mm -hmm. loved media. I mean, mm -hmm. I was watching you know. All this stuff. I mean, I watched the news of my dad back when it was just one hour of news a night, you yeah. know. Right, and, right. And you know, and we had to turn the channel on the TV, you know, and <laughs> yeah. put the desk on the turntable, you know. Yeah. And you know, but that was one of the big things. I yeah. love that, you know. And so I think, you know, what kind of really happened was, is it really kind of got me into this business because I kind of always saw video games as sort of like, the it's like TV the way it was in the 1950s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a exactly. pioneering thing, yeah. you know? I mean, there was, you know, we all kind of saw it as, you know, it's something new, but it's eventually, you know, going to get big. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least that's the way I saw it. Some yeah, people yeah. were unsure of that. Some people said, I don't know, it could have another downfall again. I'm like, no, I think now, now with computers, I think everybody's the computer generation yeah. now. Yeah. Everybody's buying and getting the home computers, and I just kind of saw it as the avenue. So I dug in deep, you know. I decided, you know, this was kind of something, my, a niche after the music thing that I could get into and I could really shine at it. Yeah. And one of the things as a musician, um, especially as in the band thing when I was doing that, was I was always the guy who was, you know, that was the one guy sitting out on Sunset Boulevard handing out the flyers. Yeah. That was a sea of flyers on the ground, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I was always the guy who was calling up the agents. I was the mm -hmm. guy who was setting up the shows at the Roxy and the Whiskey. You were I mean, taking I was, biz. You know, yeah. I was the guy doing everybody's hair yeah. and makeup, yeah. you know? Nice. I, I was that guy, too. <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, 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 you that were... hasn't changed much. <laughs> yeah. You were producing back then. Exactly. So yeah. It was it was kind of going from just the music world to the acting world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I got into the seat of sort of running the department at Interplay, um, it was sort of kind of second nature for me. It just was a different world. Yeah. So immediately I started saying, you know, I I wanted to go after the best, the biggest and the best actors I could find for mm -hmm. voice acting because I really, you know, was given. We were given, you know, money and decent budgets, and we were, you know, put in a situation where they wanted the best quality, and that was one of the things that was very fortunate for me early on. Mm -hmm. So I was able to get involved with the unions early on, with the union actors early on. Mm -hmm. It was whereas everybody else was like, you know, ooh, oh, unions, ah, you know, yeah. oh, dangerous, you know. Um, I was able to start doing that and, and start finagling, working with all the top agents, and then meeting all these great actors. 
And uh, in the beginning, I was able also, lucky enough, to work with some of the great directors mm -hmm. in the business who were primarily doing animation. Right. Mm -hmm. And before I started directing, I got a chance to hire these people. And so for me, it was this amazing learning experience, Absolutely. which you can't even buy. Yeah, it was just, yeah. like I said, I tell people, I say, just I lucked out. You know, yeah. I got lucky. And so I started working with the, with the likes of Gordon Hunt, Ginny McSwain, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Andre Romano. I mean, these are, these are the, the, the best of the best. Absolutely. You know, yeah. careers, amazing, amazing, you know, Emmys up the Yazoo, yeah. you know. And, uh, and so they, they kind of gave me this background on how to, how to do this work, mm -hmm. you know. And I was in the studios and I was, you know, monitoring, taking notes and doing everything, you know. I mean, I'll have to start someplace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And engineering and, you know, and also, you know, doing all the editing afterwards. And so I understood it from the backside up. Which is which is way better. Right. Exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. Because you know, I mean, yeah, I have no ego. Yeah, exactly. No, no. Yeah, right. Yeah. People well, go, then you have like, an appreciation. Yeah, exactly. And you were paying attention. People always say, you know, it's like, you know, I, yeah. Well, the directors always have these big egos. It's like, but what about you? Yeah. You, What's you, your, where's your ego? ego? He started you know? from the bottom up, so there is no ego. You didn't so get ego. that memo. You're supposed to. No, have I, know, I know, I know. I can't tell people that. Chris Borders is so nice. I'm like, why do I get this? Chris Borders is so nice. Where should he be more mean? No. So. And, you know, needless to say, um, you know, it was sort of like this thing where, you know, we just kept on, you know, the momentum of me f learning more and more. Yeah. Then one day came a time when we were literally juggling multiple titles. Mm -hmm. And so I, I couldn't, there was enough voiceover directors out there to hire. Yeah. So I started taking it upon myself, okay, small projects, I'm going to take these on myself. I'm going to start directing. I've seen how this these guys do decision, it. This was your decision, yeah? This had to be my decision. Okay. You know, I yeah. knew it was my next step, you okay, know? Good. And so I started, you know, directing actors. And unfortunately for me, again, the people that I was able to hire were the best of the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The writing was kind of on the wall for me mm -hmm. that my next step in my career was to, you know, go on my own. Right. So um, about 2003, I started my own company. Good decision, by the way. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Tiki Man Productions. Yeah. And by that time, of course, you know, I had worked with the cream of the crop. I mean, Interplay was kind of like, I want to say this in a strange way, but a lot of people will probably get this, but you've heard of the, 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 the Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. Yes. Yeah. Interplay is kind of like the Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, but it's like in three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can literally go anywhere in the globe and meet someone who works in the video game industry who knows somebody who knows somebody who worked in Interplay. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so my connections and my, my ability to network was so vast at that point. Mm -hmm. It was really easy from that point for me just to go right onto my own. So really, right. and I was already doing it anyways. Mm -hmm. The only difference was is that I didn't have someone writing the checks, so I had to do all the paperwork and whatnot, but that wasn't a big deal. So I was very fortunate to be able to just go right into it on my own, right. and uh, from right from then I, I was already working on you know AAA titles, you know mm -hmm. right off the bat, and had clients and people wanting at that point the best of the best. You know yeah. there was only a handful of us doing you know who knew yeah. the top actors and knew the top you know how to work with the top agents and how to finagle the deals and how to hire celebrities and negotiate these things, and so inevitably you know that was my niche you know yeah. and so I incorporated about uh, six and a half years ago mm -hmm. and um, it's been you know just nonstop ever since you That's know I'm working so cool, on about man. five titles right now and it's just you know I mean I get to meet new actors all the time so it's yeah. a blessing they're the most wonderful people are voice actors like you guys you know people who work in the industry I mean I, I mean honestly audience <laughs> I can tell you right now there are no egos well maybe a little bit yeah but <laughs> few few we are such a niche audience of of you know of creative people and and it's really a blessing to work with some of these people because honestly i mean you can sit down with someone like rob paulson yeah and it's like the man is just so cool yeah, yeah. He is. you know and anybody who's yes. met him or yeah. jim cummings you yeah. know mm -hmm. um you that, know that jess that harnell yeah, yeah. i mean they'll give the shirt off their back to you Absolutely. you know and one time i did need a shirt you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i still top yelling fact, myself that looks like a and you know i think right yeah i think this one i came from no <laughs> So, I mean, these are the best people. They are the best people, and you guys are the best people for doing this show because, I mean, it's giving back, and that's what we want to do. We, you know, we've been blessed to work in this industry and to be sort of pioneers in it, and now I think we're blessed to kind of give something back to the community. Absolutely, man. Yeah. You know, and there's well a lot said. of people out there who are fans, and there's a ton of people out there who are just absolutely amazing people who are just on the cutting edge and just waiting mm -hmm. to come out and 
be you know the next big person out absolutely. there. So, yeah. you know, absolutely, we're yeah. there to help you. We are, we <laughs> yeah. are, and thanks for saying that because yeah. I tell them that all the time. Yeah, and yeah. Now you yeah. have to believe yeah. me because you're saying it too. Yeah, um, and you got to hear the demos. Yeah, oh my guy. goodness God. gracious! Yeah. Really I mean, he, I mean, he he did one that just fooled around. I mean, I I don't know a voice actor, and yeah, <laughs> I thought I was Don LaFontaine for a minute. I mean, jeez. You know? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Let How me ask your trailer you. Crew? Yeah, I, well, you know, I don't do I only do it on the side. You know, stick with the. I stick. I direct. You know. <laughs> as a trailer video guy. You haven't given um, up the day job yet. Exactly. Okay. No, I'm keeping the day job. <laughs> what are your favorite <laughs> kinds of games to direct? In general, I really like a lot of different genres. I mean, I'm working on a comedy game right now mm -hmm. with animals for kids mm -hmm. right now. I do a lot of the war titles, and it's very popular right now. The first-person right. shooters, like the Gears of yep, War. Yep. Um, you know, John DiMaggio, who's an extraordinary, talented, amazing person, you know, who does the voice of Marcus Phoenix, and yep. he's like, mm -hmm. you know, bigger than life, you know, kind of person. Um, Carlos Faro, who was Dom in the, in the video game, you know, again, mm -hmm. these are just amazing personalities, yeah. and we really take it to the next level. We mm -hmm. try and achieve this amazing quality. We work on scenes over and over and over. Um, and then you have, you know, some of these other titles, like I worked on this one um, for the guy who created Final Fantasy, mm. um, Sakaguchi-san, and he is like this rock star in Japan, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, he, people bow to him, not just because they're bowing Culture, to each other, I mean, yeah. literally, yeah. people, I mean, I bow to him, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, thank you, you know, and, um, and you know, it, it was this blessing to work on this great title um, called Lost Odyssey, um, mm. and uh, so, it was, you know, working with the likes of Tara Strong we had in on it, and, um, gosh, Keith Ferguson. I mean, just, you know, some of these are really amazing voice actors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sally Safiotti. Mm -hmm. um, and we had this amazing cast, and we had this real weird twist to it. Because I'm used to these games being all about war, mm -hmm. serious, you know, or yeah. very wacky. And then all of a sudden we had this game that had a romantic comedy, mm. serious romance, sadness. Yeah. And then there was other stuff that was going on like we're like, you know, crying and little kids and there's all this stuff that I wasn't used to and it was like such a blast doing this title. Mm -hmm. I don't know how well it did overall in the states, but you know, but overall people came to could come to me, especially a lot of girls would come to me and say, right. you know, I was bawling when I was playing that game, you know, yeah. and that made me feel great. Yeah. And then I That's found out well about a, something like about a month ago, it was um, some website, and they had a list of like the seven saddest video games. Not mm. sadness since a bad. Yeah. <laughs> and that's something you don't hear about. Right. Sad video right, games. Usually right. video games are really like, you know, very violent and yeah. you know and whatnot. And they said what video games made people cry? And two of those were ones that I had cast and directed, mm. Gears of War and Lost Odyssey. And I was like, awesome. You know, that was kind of for me. You know, as a director, that right. made me feel good. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the audition process. Are there things that voice actors do during the audition process that work against them, things that really are not a good idea? If you could give some wisdom on that. You know, one of the things that you'll find kind of across the board is that some of these auditions that get sent out to these agencies mm -hmm. Um, that the actors have to read on have these, you know, and, and, I, and I have to kind of work at them a lot of times when they're my clients. Um, but video game companies tend to sort of forget the reality that an actor, a ton of actors are coming in to read for these parts. Mm -hmm. And they put these huge bios together, you know. His aunt's uncle's brother's friend was a really angry guy who slept with this, no, no. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and so, you know, a lot of backstory that yeah. probably the actors just going to go and not really care about. Mm -hmm. So I try and break all that down, you know, to, you know, accent, age, demeanor, personality, you know, things that are uh, that an actor is going to very quickly be able to ascertain very quickly and then find out. Mm -hmm. um, some actors, you know, will read something and of course I put in there, let's say something, it's a very serious dr dramatic video game, like a war game where I'm trying to, and I'll a lot of times put an archetype of a character or an archetype of a film mm -hmm. that people have seen. Um, like Black Hawk Down, let's say for a war title, and I say, you know, this is like very similar to like Black Hawk Down, um, Apocalypse Now kind of acting. Right. And so hopefully those actors may have seen those films, and 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 or maybe they go out and they you know YouTube or you know research, yeah, little research, research exactly, absolutely. and they see that that kind of dialogue and whatnot. So that's really helpful for actors to do that because it 
you know, once they get an, an idea of what we're trying to achieve, mm -hmm. then they have a they have an insight. You know, mm -hmm. right. inevitably, there's a lot of actors out there that maybe just because they do a lot of commercial copy or they do a lot of cartoons, they just kind of miss the mark. You know, because mm -hmm. it's just not their not their thing. You know, yeah. but they still try. You know, and I, I give everybody. You know, I listen to everybody. I give everybody credit to to try and whatnot. But the guys who are going to get these gigs are the ones who know how to go into the acting style, who know how to pull it back, who know how to go flat when they need to go flat, who know right. how to bring up the drama when they need to bring up the drama, mm -hmm. you know, who, who know how to nuance things. It's kind of like going on to a TV show, you know, yeah. or, or like like if you're doing like one of those CSI or you're doing, uh, you know, NCIS or one of these mm -hmm. cop show dramas, you know, a yeah. lot of these games are like that nowadays, exactly. you know, sci-fi dramas and whatnot. We, you know, most of these developers are typically utilizing you know, popular culture films and television shows as their archetypes for these right. games. Yeah. And so it's a lot to work with, but it, it pays a tremendous amount to really, really do your research, mm -hmm. especially if you're an actor. If you want these gigs, you know, you really got to do your research, you know. Yeah. And there are, of course, a lot of actors out there, you know, and they're just, they, they get it. They've, they've yeah. done a lot of games. They do their research and they understand it, and, they're, and they're, they get a lot of the gigs, you know, yeah. because they just immediately go in there and boom, they nail it, and then you know, and they also their skills are amazing. Mm -hmm. I always tell people when they're getting into voice acting, or when they're deciding, you know, I, say, I do a lot of funny voices, you know, and I I think I'm good at it. And a lot of friends have said good things about my voices, and I always you know get these emails and whatnot, and I try and you know give everybody an opportunity to at least give them a rundown as to what it's about, what it's like, you know, and. And it can be time consuming, but I always want to do it because I feel like, you know, if I were, I remember when I was that kid, yeah, you yes. know, and I said I wanted to be a musician and, you know, and no one gave me the time of day. So I, I want to give them that time, you know. And, uh, and one of the first things I say to them is I say, you know, to tell if you really want to be a voice actor, go get like War and Peace and start on page one and just start reading and read it out loud. Mm -hmm. And every time you fumble or stop or like, screw up or say a word wrong, start go back, start at the next period that you screwed up, and start again. And keep on doing that for a while. Read through about 25 pages. Mm. You will hate voice acting if you hate doing that. Right. You will love voice acting if you love doing it. That's really what it comes down to. Mm. I mean, regardless of whether all the funny voices we can do and all the shtick at the parties yeah. and you know the fun yeah. stuff, it really comes down to you've got to be a good reader. You've yeah. got to be able to read. You've got to be able to, to pick up on the nuances of, of copy. Mm -hmm. You've got to understand character development. And then I tell people, I say, it really comes down to acting. Yeah. You know, I mean, I know, I know a lot of these guys come from different angles. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of them come from comedy. Some of these guys come from just, you know, like an amazing actor, Steve Bloom. Yeah. Amazing voice right. actor, amazing voice. Steve, no back acting background. You know, he kind of fell into it. You mm -hmm. know, but that's the kind of like way acting is. You yeah. know, you have some of these people who are just amazing actors who just kind of have it in them. Yeah, it's a rare thing, but it does happen. It is. But it's not for everybody. Yeah. Training, I can't. You know, I mean, we always say, you know, if you can get the training in it, you're all the better. You know, mm -hmm. even yeah. if you have that talent. All you, the more training you get in this business, the more you're going to get, you know, to Absol learn and get better at it. Yeah. And and meeting people, you know, yeah. go go to these seminars, go to these things, you know. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, field it out, you know, learn which one, which ones to go to. But you know, classes, you know, there's so many great classes, and there's mm -hmm. so many great people that are superstars of voiceover mm -hmm. teaching in LA right now mm -hmm. and some travel around all over the country right. Pat Fraley for instance you know yeah. I've worked with Pat for years and you know and he has this thing and he does it and he goes around he trains all these people yeah. some and of I them are available him. through Skype mm -hmm. exactly so if exactly. you live in a place that you know they're not available to you you can always reach out to them and they will teach you yeah, yeah. and some of it's free you know yeah. I mean so like people mm -hmm. like the, like this <laughs> <laughs> I mean you know we're you know a world of information this is like all your right fingertips. Here, you're not get anywhere yeah, no, exactly, else. Everyone exactly. can afford free. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, and so when you're so and when you're listening back to these auditions, uh, are most of these characters in, in video games, are they more say animated character type things or are they more real type characters? It depends on the title. You know, I mean like I say a lot of these war titles, um, you know, some are like as serious as like say a, a, a movie like Black Hawk Down, you know. Yeah. I remember they had a lot of stars in it, and a lot of them were kind of in their beginning, you know, yeah. like Ewan McGregor and whatnot, starting yeah. off. Um, 
you know, where, they're, where they want that real, it's like a simulator, like Call of Duty, for instance, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, very popular game, very successful franchise, yep. you know, I think it's actually probably the most successful entertainment franchise in the world. Mm -hmm. um, but it has a has a very natural feel of what it's like to be in a mock battle, and I think that you know some people really like that. They want that experience, that yeah. realism. Um, and then you have games like Gears of War, which is kind of like a comic book mm -hmm. version of that. It's like you know, it's a little over the top, has a little bit of a slight edge. It's in a different world, it's in a different place. So the mm -hmm. characters have a little bit more broad, bigger sense yeah. to them, you know. Um, and, and then you have other titles like, you know, that are a little more for the younger audience, you know, yeah. for the kids, mm -hmm. where we play them really up. We have fun with them. We really exactly. get into it. Um, but like I say, it all really depends on the, on the type of title and what the publisher and the developer are really trying to achieve with the title. I get it. Um, so again, there's a different genre for everybody, yeah. you know, and there's so many different things out there, Absolutely. you know, and, which is great. I mean, it's, yeah, just, yeah, it's, it's like, like films, really you know, yeah. amazing. I know. So and, much and, great stuff. And, yeah. and we're going to talk about where it's all going. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. it's going to be crazy. But uh, uh, another question is, um, is it is it should somebody slate in their character or just their own voice? Um, I always tell people, you know, at least announce yourself. So just because I'm when I get it, a lot some of the agencies do it for them. But you yeah. know, when you're starting off, a lot of times you want to slate at least say, you know, this is you know your name, and I'm reading for blah blah blah. Should, um, should they do that in their own voice though, or in the, whatever character they're portraying? I kind of like to hear it in, the, in their in their own voice sometimes because okay. sometimes so. that gives me a dynamic of where they're a, where they're capable of going from exactly right, right. and into. Because you know you yeah. get a lot, you never really get a lot of guys who kind of want to go into this kind of voice thing. You yeah. know, I'm doing a character. You know, <laughs> yeah. but that's not what I sound like. You know, right. but the problem is, is that might not be what the job calls for. But mm. let's say if it does, then immediately I've heard what this guy can, was capable of doing. Mm. You know, but I always tell people, I say, you know, it's really good because one of the few industries, as far as entertainment goes, where you have some of these games have literally hundreds of characters mm. that we need. Right. Hundreds. I mean, you can't think of a movie or a TV drama, you know, that has a hundred characters in it. You have yeah. a lot of extras, you know, you know, in right. the background, but they're right. not talking. Yeah. And so it's the one f few industries that where we need lots of actors. Mm. The more the merrier. The more the I mean, merrier. you know, it's a great industry to be in. Yeah. And so the more character voices that you can pull off, the more accents you can pull off, realistically, the better chance you're going to get the gig. We give opportunities to people who are virtual nobodies, right. just as long as you have the chops and the ability mm -hmm. to do the virtual voice. Virtual nobodies. Yeah, virtual nobodies. I'm, I'm almost virtually yeah, nobody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so that's one of the few, few businesses where it doesn't rely on your looks, mm -hmm. you know, show up in pajamas, which some people do. <laughs> Charlie Adler, no. Yeah. <laughs> we won't go into that. Yeah, no. <laughs> Charlie breaks all the rules. Yeah, yeah. He, breaks all yeah. The rules. he breaks all the rules. And, and so, you know, it, it's like Ron Perlman once said to me, he said, why would I turn this job down? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I sit in makeup from 5 a.m. till 7 a.m. <laughs> and then I start acting. Yeah. And yep. so he's like, I show up in any clothes I want to wear and I'm just sitting on a chair with a microphone in front of me. Right. There's no camera on me. I have no stress. Mm -hmm. And I get to do character voices. And I get to work with these amazing people. This is the greatest job in the world. Yeah. Exactly. Well, what about in the dialogue about changing it, ad-libbing, adding to it? What is your feeling about that in the audition process? I have a couple actors that are amazing at doing that. And it's hit and miss. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes I get clients that are sort of a little bit like, just read the copy, you know, oh, this guy might be a live wire. Right. Yeah. But chances are, a lot of the time, if you read it as is, then you throw maybe a little, little extra in there, that's going to say, wow, that's someone who can ad lib. That's someone who can take the copy mm -hmm. and go that little extra mile with it. And a lot of times in video games, just like with a lot of you know movies and TV, yeah. Altman films and whatnot, ad libs a huge selling factor for an mm -hmm. actor. The ability to make the character your own. Um, you know, like working with Tim Curry. Tim will sit there and he'll go, "Well, I, I don't, I don't think he would say that." I. Hmm. No, 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 and we'll we'll discuss the character over and over and over and, yeah. until he's happy with it, and I and I see that as sort of like 
well, Tim's a brilliant actor, you yeah. know. Um, we know kind of what we want, but if Tim comes up with an idea to deliver that, because he embodies that character, because sure. of all his years and years of yeah. training and all the film roles he's played over the years, you can go to that place and say, okay, let's, let's listen to what you got. If you have that ability to just make up things or to change copy on the fly, again, mm -hmm. it's all part of the process. Yeah. It's all a creative process. I, I'm one of the people in this industry that believes it's all a team effort. Mm -hmm. In a lot of other you know, films and television, sometimes the team effort can really be down to one guy's decision. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but in this business, we like team players. We like people that are creative, that can come stuff on the fly, you know. I think it's it's really important in yeah. this business, you know. And I and I think again, it's one of those things and, where you know, yeah, and such as part. And probably right. you like working with people that are that are cool to work yeah. with, right? Yeah. Because I mean, I'm sure, or maybe not. Is there ever a time when like you work with somebody who just like is not like <laughs> the greatest person in the world to well, work you know, with? Well, it, it, you know, I mean, you know, I direct a lot of celebrities. What do you say? No. <laughs> 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 but no, I mean, I, you know, my experiences have always been have been really positive, okay. you know, and I've had some really amazing opportunities to work with some amazing people. Um, you know, a good example, I always tell people a story. Um, Gary Oldman, mm -hmm. years ago I brought him in um, to uh, do this dragon character mm -hmm. in this game called Spyro, and it was a kid's game. Yeah. And, uh, okay, in my 20 years of doing this, I've never had a voice actor contact me the day before the session, <laughs> much less a celebrity. Yeah. Phone rings. This is Gary Ullman. Uh This is Chris Baldus. Yeah, Gary. Hey, how's it going? Um, yes. Well, I I didn't know if you actually know what I sound like. But a lot of people don't know what I actually sound like. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Gary is a master at characters, yeah. master mm -hmm. at manipulating his voice. And so we, he, we spent, you know, half an hour on the phone discussing the character. I thought, you know, wow, was, you know, what a brilliant guy, you know. Came in amazing, you know, because he, he knew what he was coming into, mm -hmm. no ego. Right. Mm -hmm. Sat and had lunch with us afterwards. Again, very rare thing. Yeah. Told stories, you know. It's one of those businesses where you're so lucky to be able to hang out with some of these people. And um, again, just, you know, it, it just went by so well because this is a person who got into acting, obviously, because they love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't care about the money or the, t or, you know, or what. Anymore. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Well, Anymore. It, it was about getting into the business. Yeah because that's what they were good at. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from a director perspective, what are some do's and don'ts for voice actors in a recording session? It's always good to be a nice person. It's always good to listen. It's always good to show up on time, mm -hmm. you know? Some people out there, which I won't name names, <laughs> who are, But you know who you, you are. Do yeah. you know who you are? Yeah. Um, but no, it's always good to show up on time. That says something about you. Mm -hmm. Even if you show up early and you say, you know, you say, gosh, you know, I came early to um, just my read my copy. How early is too early? You know, too early is, I mean, I would say half an hour is not too early, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a couple Unless hours, you're you know. Me. If you're meeting me, yeah, don't yeah. that's too early. Yeah, I had one guy show up the day before the session. <laughs> but, oh, that's uh, too you early. Know, that was a little early, you know. <laughs> <laughs> fortunately, you know, I still gave him his copy, but yeah, he had right. to go home, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, but no, I mean, it's, it's you know, like I say, if you show up 10 minutes, 15 minutes before the session, you know, and it's something, you know, I mean, we always try and get copy as much as we can to the actors beforehand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, one of the things about the video game industry in general is, is that unlike film and television, we don't do a lot of table reads. We don't have these auditions. Mm -hmm. We usually are on the fly. We're, we're covering a ton of content in a very, very small window because we don't have lighting and camera angles yeah. like these wonderful people, our crew here. We have a crew. Uh, which I have to acknowledge, <laughs> we're doing, are doing a fantastic job. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Um, you know, and so all this lighting and all these and great things editor, that they're doing Jeff. and they're creating all this content. Um, we don't have that. You know, We have a microphone. We have an engineer. Um, and usually a note taker, myself, you know, and the client, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and then there's the actor on the mic, and so it's a fairly simple setup, um, and it's all about the sound of the voice. Yeah. 
And so since we don't have all that else going on, we are really you know, have the ability to cover a lot of ground. You know, mm -hmm. As Shatner once said, I think, during a recording session, he says, this is like doing 10 movies. Yeah. You know, it, it is. It's mm -hmm. like doing 10. It's, more, it's dialogue of 10 movies in one four-hour session. You know, I mean, sometimes we're covering as many 300 lines mm -hmm. in wow. one recording session. You know, and, and one recording session is only four hours. You know, that's, right. that's an average recording session. Um, put all your personal stuff aside. You're there. Act. You're, you're, you got into acting because you wanted to get away from all your real reality. We exactly. all want to get away from our reality. Yeah. I show up at the studio the same way. Um, I, I take all my personal stuff aside and I say, you know, I'm here to get into a, a role with an actor. You know, mm -hmm. we get into it and we really live and breathe it. You know, and that's it's really that's what it's about. You know, what can an actor do to make to make it easier for you when they're actually in the session? Is there anything he can do? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, really, it's it's you know, as a, as a director, yeah. you know, my job really especially in video games is to you know explain what's going on within the script mm -hmm. and then to help that actor achieve what we're trying to get with those lines you right. know so whatever it takes you know um, you know so if I'm if I'm telling uh, an actor you know okay that was great a good run you know um, Let's try it a little, you know, this way. Or let's right. let's bring up the anger a little bit here. Or I need you to project a bit more. Um, you know, follow with what I'm doing. Yeah. I mean, I like to work, you know, very closely with actors. You know, I like to really kind of sync it. You know, like a lot of times in video games, you know, which we, you know, I thought it was really funny because um, on Conan O'Brien when he had Gary Allman on, yeah. he said yeah something. He goes, he goes, because oh, have you heard something called battle chatter? Because he was talking about his work in Call of Duty, mm -hmm. and a lot of actors don't know about that. Um, but yeah, that is what we do in these these uh, war video games. We have a lot of what they call battle chatter, and it's really, really throat wrenching yelling, mm -hmm. and reactions, and blood curling screams, and things that just tear your throat to shreds. Yeah. And one of the things that I'm notorious for in doing them versus directing them, I actually do examples for the actors um, because I want them to kind of you know, especially if they aren't used to doing it, I want them to get an idea of what I would do, right. and then they can kind of it's easy for an actor to mimic. To mimic, yeah. yeah. And, and so if I can give them an example, then a lot of times they can say, oh, I get it. Okay, you want it like that. Or I can give them a timing or something specific versus me just sort of, you know, giving them, you know, air signals or whatever. Yeah. And so, you know, that's one of the things I always do with a lot of the actors, you know, but you sometimes you get these actors who kind of sit there and, you know, and they, they'll gripe, ah, oh, you know, I, uh, I got this book that I have to read for tomorrow. Well, that's great. And you know, I that's totally tomorrow. understand. It's, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, today and is today. And you know what? <laughs> I and that's need you why to do that too. I always tell your agent what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. So that you can tell your agent, I got this other thing to do tomorrow. Can we move the schedule around? You mm -hmm. know. And a lot of the pro actors out there, they know. They know exactly how to kind of finagle their schedule or say, hey, you know, this probably isn't the best day for me to yell 300 right. lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I got to do this like little boy voice the next day, which actually might be good. Yeah. But yeah, so you know, definitely, you know, you know what you're going in for. Right. You know, or if you don't know, ask your agent to ask me. And I mean and and sometimes I don't even know, but I'll try and find out. Um, but really, you know, be prepared. Be prepared for anything. In mm -hmm. games, we can go the limit. I mean, it's not a cartoon like a lot of yeah. people. So then they go, oh, yeah, you know, I came into a cartoon and, uh, you know, I read, you know, 12 lines. You know, that was yeah. my gig. You know, I got paid. It was fantastic. You know, it was with an ensemble group of people. So I got to hang out with all these my buddies and everything. And, you know, it took four hours, but I really had 12 lines. Right. Well, mm -hmm. in video games, it's usually going to be one actor mm -hmm. and you're gonna not going to be reading only 12 lines. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. but very rarely. You're no. going to be reading a lot. Lines, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and so four hours. So it, is it typical that in four hours that actor's parts are done for that game, or is there more? Not necessarily. You know, it really depends on the type of game. I mean, like for instance, um, a video game like like Gears of War. Yeah. You know, that took, you know, literally. Um, a, a, actually, condensed within you know different periods of time about six months to record mm -hmm. over a two-year span of time. The last game we did. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't because it was so dialogue intensive. You know, we were working different movies out. We had the actors come back. There's a lot of yelling. There's a lot of gameplay yelling and different uh, lines and dying. Mm -hmm. And you know, and he's going in. Bah, yeah. Take it off. You know, a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, 
and and we're changing things and trying to make things better and so they they take that franchise extremely serious you know mm -hmm. um, and then there's other times where I have titles that it's a week and that's it you know it's a, it's a week of recording and maybe it's something that just doesn't have a ton of dialogue maybe it's a lot of characters but not a lot of dialogue um, and then I've had titles that lasted you know three years where they slowly build it over yeah. time you know like we'll come back every two months and record a week and then they build a little more they get the animations done and then you know so it really is across the board okay. and then people say oh is it is it like like TV is there a season for video games? Is there a time period? Is there a time crunch? And in video games, again, there's no rules, no, no method rules. of the madness. Mm -hmm. It's it's like across the board. I mean, last last year, I literally worked almost right up to Christmas. I don't know if you can answer this question. You're gonna have to answer. I'll this try. <laughs> no, I mean, because I know it's it's a very subjective kind of question. But when you get for a role, when you get down to the final few contenders. Mm -hmm. What is the criteria you and your clients sort of look at when it's, it's you know, you've got the acting, th there's things that are, everyone has. What yeah. is it that makes someone say, this is the guy, this is the girl? Again, it's, it's different depending on the client. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times I narrow it down based on, okay, this person's kind of, they were expecting sort of like a French actress to kind of sound a little like this type of, you know, pitch sound a little like this archetype, you know, uh, let's say Natalie Portman with a French accent. Let's say that's mm -hmm. our archetype, you know, and so we so we get a couple actresses that we narrow it down to that are within that realm of that sort of thing that the developer really likes. Uh -huh. And so we'll kind of narrow it down into that group and I'll try and help help them narrow that down. And then from that point, the developer really has the final choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes they'll, I mean, they always come to me and they say, you know, here's our top 3 contenders. Um, have you worked with any of these people? A lot of times, you know, th that tends to be kind of a selling point, mm -hmm. unfortunately, as, as reality is, you know, is that right. they want to they want to know that I know this person can come in there and they know their chops. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, I tell them yes or no, um, but I try and persuade them to give always give people opportunities. And I w I'm always working with new actors. One of the different things about the video game industry versus the animation industry and film and television is we tend to like to have a large revolving door of different people coming in and out. Yeah. We always want to give people new opportunities because... Um, Especially with a lot of dying going yeah, on. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, a lot, and hundreds of characters. Yeah, right. the cast. Yeah, exactly. And so the more we can find. So, so yeah, it, it tends to vary. And then I have clients that sometimes just say, you know, Chris, you know, we trust your judgment. Um, you know, who would you bring in on this? You know, and, uh, and could you just send us some demos and then, you know, then we'll do a little auditioning and we'll narrow it down very quickly. But more op opportunity usually comes up where they want to hear a lot of people. Well, that's all the time we have, you awesome people. But be sure and tune in next week for part two of the Chris Borders interview. It's going to be awesome. Yes. And send us your questions and comments, plus like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at VO Buzz Weekly. You guys take care until next time, and just remember, you, you always, always have time for a little buzz. buzz.